Hey, it's McGann, and I just got a hold of the Coraline actual book and the comic book version. So two of the biggest differences between the Coraline graphic novel and the movie is that there's no YB. There's also no Mrs. Lovett, which is YB's grandma. In the comic version, the house is actually split into four different apartment units and all of the tenants own their own units. I also noticed that there is no doll being used in the Coraline graphic novel. The well is also part of the garden area, but there doesn't seem to be any correlation with the well possibly being the other world. The graphic novel does explicitly talk about fairy rings for a second, but just that she sees them on the ground, they're nowhere near the well to be associated with it. I did think it was odd that in the movie, Miss Spink and Miss Forcible had, it looked like a Scottish Terrier or a Schnauzer, and in the book they specifically call them Highland Terriers, which look a good bit different. And since there is no YB, it's actually Miss Spink and Miss Forcible that tell Coraline not to go mess with the well, that it's dangerous and that they think it's a half mile or so deep. And in the graphic novel, they show the well as more of a traditional looking well where it's got the base around the hole and it's been boarded up. Hey, my neighbor Totoro! Now in the graphic novel, the mother seems kind of like busy and a little bit disinterested in what Coraline's doing, but to me it reads like Coraline is just a really whiny kid and her mom is just kind of tired of hearing it. Another difference with the graphic novel is that the door is a full-size door. And then Coraline's mom mentions that it must have gone to the other flat before they changed it into apartments and now they bricked it up because it's, it's apartments, but she specifically says that there's another apartment over there and it's empty. Nobody's in it. In the graphic novel, Coraline mentions that she is afraid of spiders, which I thought was, you know, just alluding to things to come. And there's even some imagery with the other mother where she's kind of dripping with spiders on her or there's spiders in the other world. And there's there's a lot of spider imagery, but oddly, the other mother does not turn into a spider-like creature at all. In fact, as far as the other mother goes, Coraline only really mentions that her fingers look weird, that they're too long, they've got bright red nail polish, her teeth are a little bit too long, and the more she's in the other world, the more she sees the other mother as ugly. And another interesting difference is that when Coraline first gets drawn to the door, she sees a rat, and it's very distinctly a rat, and it kind of leads her to the door to the other world, but it's still bricked up. Nothing's changed about it at this point. And then the next morning, Mr. Bobinski gives the mouse message to Coraline to warn her to be careful of the other world, but it's before she's ever been there, whereas in the movie, the mice warn her after she's already visited. Miss Spink and Miss Forcible also don't have any candy jars. They just have this regular green jar that they get the stone with the hole in it out of. Now, when she finally does get into the other world, there's a corridor that's like this long, narrow hallway between the door to her world and the door to the other world. So it's not a tunnel. She didn't have to crawl through it. And it constantly says that every time she gets in that corridor, she feels like something is right behind her. And when she walks into the other world, she does notice a painting on the mantle, but it has not changed at all. She just notes how it's identical to the one at her house. So it's not like, oh, the little boy that lost his ice cream versus the little boy that has his ice cream. So it's a better world, obviously. Now, when Coraline goes to the other Miss Spink and the other Miss Forcible's house to see the show, there are quite a few interesting changes because before they take off their old lady suits and become the skinny, pretty actresses that they used to be, they're shown as having like real eyes, not button eyes. And I'm not sure what to make of that yet. It could just be an artistic choice, but I thought that that was something very distinctive that in the movie, they definitely have button eyes the whole time we see them, but not in the book. We also see that the other world has a daylight time, which in the movie, it is constantly night. And at the point that the other mother requests Coraline to use the button eyes, I don't think Coraline's really sold on the place. I think she's kind of having fun, but she's not really like, oh, I want to be here forever, like the movie Coraline kind of seemed to be. Coraline also doesn't panic that her parents are missing. She's even shown as going about her day, going to bed, waking up, huh, they're still not here kind of thing. And then going about the whole next day, she goes to the grocery store and gets herself some food. She gives herself a bath. She goes to sleep. It just, she's going about her day like nothing ever happened. And then when Coraline goes back to see the real world sisters, 
they kind of gloss over the fact that Coraline is talking about her parents being missing and they just keep talking about going to April's niece's house. But yeah, basically Coraline didn't get any help from the old ladies downstairs and she finally starts getting scared on the second night when no one's come home and it's about two or three in the morning. So the cat shows up, takes her over to the mirror on the wall, and there are her parents just hanging out in the mirror. And they also made a point to mention that the mirror was from an old wardrobe and that it had been hung up on the wall, taken out of the wardrobe and hung up on the wall. I'm not sure what to make of that, if anything, at this point. But it was odd that they specifically mentioned where the mirror came from. Now, in the other world, they do show the mirror in the hallway as being more magical than we've seen before because the other mother manipulates it and shows Coraline this imagery of her parents coming home in what's supposed to be the real world, but they're talking about how they just got back from vacation and it was so great to go without Coraline. And we also see the other mother use a key and she uses the key in a way to unlock the mirror. And I can't tell exactly if it's supposed to be the same key that opens the door to the other world or if she has a whole ring of keys and we just don't see them except for whichever one is convenient at that moment. Now, when Coraline goes to sleep in the other world, she does not transport back to the real world and she has no expectation to because at that point she knows she's trapped and her real parents have already been abducted. The other mother also has no reflection, which I'm going to go back and check in Coraline, the movie, to see if that's accurate when she goes up to the mirror. I haven't paid attention, but they did make a point to say that the Bell Dam does not have a reflection. I don't know if that means she's a vampire or what that's supposed to imply. Now, when Coraline finally gets in trouble with the other mother and thrown behind the mirror, she does meet the other ghost kids there, and they're drawn as having eyes, not button eyes, and they don't say anything about letting the bell dam sew button eyes into their face. They do present a little bit more information than we get out of the kids in the movie. Now, the little boy ghost does mention that he remembers having a governess, and that sort of supports my theory on the dates for the candy jars in the movie. And I believe that's in part two of my Coraline theory that you can find on this channel. But governesses were used primarily before World War I, which would be 1918 or earlier. And in the movie version, Coraline refers to the little boy as Huck Finn Jr. And I explained that Huckleberry Finn and that sort of cultural stereotype would have been present around the 1880s. So having a governess, that would definitely connect the two as being well before the 1920-something date that's on the candy dish. The ghost kids also mentioned that they saw the other mother, then they never saw their real mother again, which also supports another theory that I was playing with, that once you enter the other world, you never actually go back, and the Bell Dam is creating a fake real world for you to live in from that point on. And since the comic version does not have a YB, it's actually the other mother who eventually comes in and takes Coraline out from behind the mirror. And then she gives her breakfast and Coraline starts confronting her about what the ghosts say. And very oddly, the other mother says, don't believe in ghosts because they lie. And a page or so later, when Coraline is making a deal with the other mother about a game th about the game that they're going to play, the other mother swears on the grave of her own mother and then comments in this really weird way that makes you think that the bell dam buried her own mother alive. Ultimately, Coraline finds a marble in her toy box in Miss Spink and Forcible's cocoon bubble and then one with Mr. Bobo, Mr. Bobinski, whichever. Now, Mr. Bobinski in the graphic novel version, he has no performing circus that Coraline ever gets to see, which is kind of curious because it was a really big scene in the movie. But I wonder what that is saying about Mr. Bobinski and his life and what he actually does. But when she goes into Mr. Bobinski's apartment, he's some kind of hoarder. It just seems like trash is piled up everywhere. And when she gets too close to him, she finds that he is made of rats. And the rats keep singing this really creepy set of songs. And I don't really know what they mean because they don't really seem to come true. But... It, it has a lot of implication towards rats that it never gets to what the heck they're talking about. There's also a notable difference in the three ghost children in that the one that would have been Mrs. Lovett's twin sister actually looks like she's in a fairy costume. And at the end of the comic, when all the ghost children have been released, Coraline sees the fairy girl as actually flying. So I wonder if that is the legitimate fairy that I've heard referenced in the actual book where the Bell Dam had fed off the magical energy of the fairy. 
And at one point, the cat gets very scared and says that the portals that he knows of in between the two worlds have flattened and now he can't get out. And that's actually why she ended up carrying the cat through the house and throwing it at the other mother because the cat couldn't get out on his own. And now at that moment, Coraline takes off through the door and tries to escape, tries to close it, and she can't. And several panels show a ghost mother and father figure which I don't really understand what that was supposed to be because they show the three ghost children plus two more spirits, which could only be her mom and dad. But once she gets onto the other side again into the real world, quote unquote, she does see her parents alive. So I don't know what to make of that either. And that last time when Coraline is fleeing out of the corridor with the spirits all around her, she reaches over to the wall and mentions that it's fuzzy and it's hairy and she's scared to death. And then she tries to reach the wall again in another place and she feels like she put her hand in something's mouth. But the graphic novel does not explain it any further at that point. And I don't know what to make of that, but that's that's insanely something there that we have no idea. And maybe she was killed at that point. But at any rate, once she is on the side of what she believes is the real world, the bell dam's hand makes it through but it's like a human kind of hand. It's not a robotic hand like the movie. And the hand is loose for over a week and it keeps like running amok and, and it attacks the dog Hamish. And then she finally throws herself a tea party around the well and ends up saving herself by tricking the hand to jump into the well thinking it's a table for the tea party. And I actually really appreciate that difference more because in the movie version, YB has to come and save Coraline and I hate that. But those are my extremely long list of notes and everything. I uh, hope you enjoyed hearing about the differences and definitely go pick up the graphic novel and check it out because it's really different and it's really fun. And I'd love to get some other opinions on these theories here for what's going on and how the differences relate or how they reinforce different theories that are out there. So thanks for watching today and goodbye.